so for those of you who just attended this session uh, that that I where we discussed the uh, the case study for the deployment of our um, blockchain um, you'll uh, you'll understand the sort of the significance of the slide but um, I won't rehash that here today but I have come to the conclusion, and if anyone wants to talk about this afterwards, feel free to hang out or tonight over at the hotel. Um, so, you know, I think that, you know, I view that the world today, uh, there's a lot of predators, a lot of Tyrannosauruses out there, and uh, I think our best chance to stop them is we gotta have to be Triceratops, and I know that's relatively obscure, and uh, we'll, I'll explain that. Uh, over a beer sometime, but what we're gonna talk about, my name is Dan Zaretsky, this is Kevin Leeds, we're from Provici, and um, we developed a blockchain offering. Which is a Hyperledger Fabric blockchain grafted to an existing enterprise system, in this case, a loyalty platform and we've done this in production. So our, um, our offering we built and we sold one copy of it and uh, we currently deployed that into production at a large, one of the largest OEMs, uh, automobile OEMs in the world. And we're currently in pilot with them. And our offering has been, um, has been deployed uh, and we have um, learned some very great, we did it to learn some, some uh, have some very valuable learning, and um, we achieved that. And we are expecting to take these learnings and feed them back in to our product, and we're not trying to solve world problems yet. We're not trying to take over any industries. We're trying to do some blocking and tackling to get our large corporate customer base moving in the right direction to take advantage of blockchains and Hyperledger um, blockchains and tools specifically. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time talking about our offering and, and what we did. I'm gonna skip through my view of how we can make the world a better place by go, moving to a blockchain-centric transaction model to eliminate a lot of intermediaries. I'm not gonna talk about how we're gonna make the world full of rainbows and unicorns but I'm gonna talk a little bit about our offering and then I'm gonna show you the software very quickly. So the difference between the Provici blockchain offering and other blockchain offerings in the loyalty space specifically is that most of the other players are trying to create and develop an entire loyalty platform on the blockchain. And what we're doing is we're simply grafting a blockchain to an existing enterprise loyalty platform, and I'll give you um, an example of that. So um, a, a loyalty platform does a lot more than simply move loyalty points around. There's a loyalty platform requires a lot of customer demographic information, it requires a lot of sales and marketing information, it generates promotions and offers, um, a loyalty platform defines the tiers and tries to drive customer behavior or member behavior. That's what a loyalty platform does. A blockchain doesn't necessarily uh, lend itself well to, to any or all of those things. But what a blockchain does do, it allows you the ability to securely transact assets amongst blockchain participants. So all we've done, let me go to the next slide here. All we've done is, if you, if you think of a, a, loyal, a large loyalty platform, in, in this case it's Siebel, Oracle's Siebel loyalty product, what we've done is we've taken the very large Oracle database that sits underneath a, a loyalty platform of a company like, say, Southwest Airlines or Starbucks. Both use Siebel loyalty as their loyalty platform underneath the covers. There's not a lot of publicity about that. But um, what we've done is we've taken the large Oracle database 
that sits under or sits behind and supports those large loyalty platforms and programs. And as you can see, the little gold, uh, the little gold bar here, you essentially, you know, in the old days, we did what was called a carve out. And we basically took the, the point transactions and transfers and the balances and move those onto the blockchain. Those are the assets, right? What's the asset in a loyalty program? It's the points. Points can be thought of as currency. Loyalty points can be thought of as one of the first cryptocurrencies that ever existed. So all we really did was take the thing that naturally makes sense to go on a blockchain, pulled that out of their existing loyalty platform and put it on the blockchain. And this is where it took it takes a lot, it took me a long time to get to this point, and I don't expect you to get there with me today, but I believe that the capabilities that we, we provide by just moving those point assets onto the blockchain justifies the entire existence of private and permission blockchains. The benefits that can be achieved by this simple act, act of carving out those assets and putting them onto a blockchain, um, we're starting slow, but they could grow to monumental proportions and change the world. And I know everybody in blockchain loves to say that, and we're a long way away from being able to do that, but the, but the key benefit here is up in the top left-hand corner is by moving, So by moving, by moving the assets to the blockchain, what the, the, in the top left corner, the main thing that we achieve is the ability for the owner or issuing company of a large loyalty program to quickly and easily, at low cost, extend their loyalty program and platform to a large number of partners. And by... By, by transference of the benefit, we can achieve what, it, what you see in the top right-hand corner, which is increased customer usage of loyalty benefits. So what, what that means is that essentially you have a lot of points. Probably most of you have uh, a lot of loyalty points in various programs that you never use. So the theory is that if you had more opportunities to use those points outside of, of just the issuing company, there's the potential that those points would be more valuable to you and you, can be, you would become more engaged in that loyalty program. So those are the two big benefits. Some of these others are um, also benefits. In the bottom right, the position for publicly traded token at a future date. This is where it gets in a little bit more to the abstract um, concept of, um, of essentially a future world where loyalty points could be exchanged on centralized or decentralized exchanges just like cryptocurrencies or fiat currencies are traded on exchanges every day. You could envision a world where I could exchange my rapid rewards points with somebody who has a lot of Marriott points if I need to, if I need, if I want to use those, right? And there could be exchange rates between those programs and those tokens. So let me cut to the, uh, cut to the chase. Okay. Okay. So, found a cool tool that allows us to sort of project and share the uh, the images on our mobile devices on the screen. So, what we have here is on the uh, on the left, you have the 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 um, mobile application that the partner would use in their store. And it's a simply a wallet that allows them to receive loyalty points or loyalty tokens, whatever you want to call them. In this case, the use case is they're, they're called beans. So the issuing company is Supremo Coffee, and their loyalty points are called beans. And you earn beans by, by, by spending money at, at Supremo Coffee. So on the left, what we have 
is a partner in the Supremo Coffee Loyalty Program called Tahini Grand Cafe. And they're a partner in the loyalty program and they're, they will accept the beans for payment for some of the products that they offer. On the right, we see a loyalty member wallet. His name is Alex. He's a bronze member, as you can see, and he's currently got 18,000 beans. Now, typically what would happen, the Alex is a loyalty member, an avid one, and he remembers that uh, he saw an offer that came from Supremo Coffee that said that he could exchange his loyalty points for some pizza at Tahini Grand Cafe. So let's go to his wallet, look at his options to redeem points, and he sees that he's got four offers. And he looks down and he sees that um, he can get his favorite pizza for 4,000 beans. He clicks, here help me out, do this part, would you? Yeah. So he clicks the offer on his uh, mobile device and the partner puts their device into scan mode to receive tokens. And of course, the store owner could uh, also just have a laminated printed copy of their QR code. There's no need for them to, to expose their wallet. So the, we read the QR code here. You wanna go ahead and do that? It, it identifies who he's sending the tokens to he types in the amount, 4,000, clicks pay. If fingerprint authentication is required on the mobile device, it's provided. And as you can see, both of the devices receive confirmation that the point transfer has taken place once the confirmation is received back from the blockchain. Additionally, the member wants to make sure that the transfer went to the right place. He can look at his details, looking at the historical transactions on the blockchain, and he sees the top one, 4,000 points transacted or transferred to the Tahini Grand Cafe. Similarly, the partner would like to make sure that they receive their tokens and they can also look at the details before they give the pizza, before they actually start cooking the pizza and make sure that those beans have been transferred into their wallet. And as you can see, they received 4,000 tokens from Alex and they're now ready to make the pizza. So now a couple other quick features that I wanna share with you. So in a partner wallet, partner would typically be able to, they don't, uh, this partner is a cafe, so they don't necessarily do business using beans. So at some point, there needs to be the ability for them to convert those beans into real money, which is what they want. And so they would have the ability to con click convert tokens or convert beans in this case, um, and we provide them the capabilities to convert those tokens to uh, other types of uh, other types of assets. In addition, the other capability that we provide is for the member, Alex. He, can, he was very happy with the pizza and he was very happy that he was able to use his coffee points to get a pizza. So he decides he wants to refer a friend and he can simply type in his friend's email address. The friend gets a link. You can set it up so that the friend gets some free beans or you know, some kind of offer. This is basic loyalty blocking and tackling 101. And, um, the other, let me just show you one other thing real quick. This is really the net of what the application does, but just to confirm, I'm gonna just show you that it really got written to the blockchain. So we do that by looking in Composer. going to look at the transactions.
uh, as you can see, the most recent transaction, we're expecting it to be the 4,000 point or bean transfer from Alex to uh, Tahini Grand Cafe. You see this particular transaction took place at about the right time. It was a transfer point transaction. If I go and look at the details of this record, we can see that it came from our member Alex. It was a transfer points function. It went to the Tahini Grand Cafe clerk five. The points amount was 4,000. And as you can see, here's the cryptographic hash that secures the transaction. I would also show you the data being created in the existing loyalty platform, but uh, it's not the appropriate venue for that, but if anybody's interested to come up and see, basically in this particular case, we've integrated this with Oracle's loyalty cloud product. We've also integrated the Provici blockchain with the Oracle Siebel loyalty product. But uh, long story short, we can integrate the Provici blockchain with any existing loyalty system that's out there because what we provide is a set of APIs that allows for the communications to take place between the mobile app or device, the back-end loyalty system, and the blockchain. So that's what the offering is. It's APIs that allows you to access the blockchain and the existing loyalty platform and a mobile device framework that basically gets you started. We don't expect the, the uh, to the, the mobile app that I showed you, we don't expect to sell that. What we expect is that it's a reference app and that large companies with large um, loyalty programs already have their own uh, mobile applications for loyalty. And so we would just embed our capabilities and give them a reference app that shows them how to include these blockchain calls into their existing mobile apps. So I think I'm out of time. I'm happy to stay up here. If anyone has any questions, feel free to come on up and uh, we'll stay as, um, as long as there's interest. Thanks, everyone.